Hey, this is Christy and Jen, and we are happy, healthy, and skeptical. And this is our second episode, and we are talking about all things health today. Figure it's great timing with the new year, January, to talk about health and how to create it and how to own it. And so as we get started, though, we are not healthcare professionals. Everything we talk about today is based on our opinions and our experiences. So Jen, let's kick this off. What does health mean to you? I feel like you started it with uh, with a punch, right? That's a big question. <laughs> I think for a lot of people, health can mean a lot of different things. For me, I kind of almost more than two parts, but there's really the before and there's the now. And there's the before I really got to learn even more. And I think actually health is one of my favorite topics because you can't stop learning about it, right? It's something that's constantly evolving, especially for people as individuals. But the before for me is, uh, you know, it was way more focused on fitness, moving my body, exercise, and, you know, nutrition. Um, But I think now with all the things that I've learned, health immediately, when I think health, I think gut health. It's the first thing that comes to mind before me. It's before the working out, it's before the stretching, it's before the recovery, it's before the food, it's truly gut health. I think that's the biggest thing for me when it comes to my health and how do I make sure my gut is healed so that I can get into everything else that it supports. Yeah, I mean, I love that. Um, I totally relate to that because being having been in the fitness world and being a uh, performer and just being at the top of my game before I learned more about nutrition, like I can agree where I say that it was more about how I moved and how much I worked out and things like that. But as you say, gut health, that totally rang true to me too, because our immune system starts there. Our serotonin is there. Our skin issues start there, but I didn't really understand that before. So while I thought I was in the best shape of my life, while I was performing and teaching fitness and all these things, I feel like I feel better in my body though, these days having gotten into gut health. So I'm so glad you bring that up as, as a, a huge point today. For sure. And I think part of it, like you're saying, you know, it's the before, right? I kind of think of before 30. I don't know if that's really a thing for you, but we had more time, right? I could go to the gym maybe five days a week, or I could work out five days a week. Uh, Maybe I didn't have tiny humans at the time that, you know, I didn't want to bring to the gym with me. So I think, like I said, your health evolves and your priorities change. Um, But that doesn't mean feeling your best changes. And I wish I knew actually back then all the things that I know now. We've come a long way. (laughs) (laughs) If you asked me before, I'd be like, what do you want me to know? Like, I don't understand what's going on in the gut. What's in there? How does that control my mindset? How does it control, you know, my skin? Like, I don't understand. And I think that's been a huge a huge opportunity for me to figure out how much, and I think we're still learning too, but how much our gut controls. I really share with my clients that it's it's the second brain in the body because it controls so much when you really get down to it, I think. And then I always laugh. At, this is actually a secret, but I always laugh when people talk about the microbiome and gut flora and gut fauna because all I can think of is Sleeping Beauty. And I know that's really silly, but that's all I can think of. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever put that together, but yeah, our fairies are, are named after our microbiome. <laughs> that's hilarious. I never thought of that before, but now that's going to pop up every time I hear that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, let me, can I turn the question around onto you and, and what do you feel like health means to you right now? Yeah. So I think it's always changing and I think it's so different for each person. Um, but really, I think it's about how do we show up in our day? Like I, there are days, sometimes it's daily that I feel healthier. And some days it's, sometimes it's for weeks, I feel healthier, um, or not as healthy. And I think it's how I'm showing up in my day. I really relate to that. Um, and so I think it's an ongoing journey and it's different levels for different people because now my, my view of health is so different than it was 10 years ago when even I was at my 
thinking I was at my healthiest. I was definitely in the best shape of my life, that's for sure. Um, but I think it's evolved in more, so much more of a balance of things too, where, I mean, obviously now I'm not in a gym for two to four hours a day. Um, so finding a balance between the food and eating and sleep. I think that's key. <laughs> and definitely sleep that plays a huge part of it that I think gets overlooked a lot of times, um, but can make or break a day for sure. Uh, for sure. For sure. I think you made a good point though. Like it's kind of almost when we were talking about happiness, it's not going to be the same every single day, right? Your health isn't going to make you feel the same exact way every day, depending on what you did maybe the day before or even that morning, right? Like how you felt your body. And I even think, you know, you've actually shared on social that you're pregnant again. I think being pregnant is that changes your health, right? That's ever evolving. And then for me, I'm one year postpartum. That's a totally different level of health and how you kind of take care of your body. And I think people have to kind of be cognizant. It's not going to mean the same thing to everybody, but there's definitely things that we can do to move the needle forward on our health. Yes, for sure. And, and as you say that, I want to go back to what you mentioned about gut health, because I mean, it's fantastic that finally more people are talking about microbiome, like you said, gut health, but still to a lot of people, it's kind of elusive. And like, what mm -hmm. does that mean? Or really, what are some key things we can do to get into gut health? Like from the bare beginnings, like the very, you know, the beginning, the bare minimum of like, well, how do I even start? <laughs> it's the price of entry, right? What's the price of entry to get into the gut? Yeah. I love that. But I think, I think people, some people just don't know where to start. And I feel like for me, if, if the things that I do now hadn't been introduced to me, I don't know if I would be that connected with my gut health. And, and I just love be, being able to share with people that it's actually not as complicated as some people make it out. Like there's not these extraordinary things you have to do every day to move the needle towards health. Okay. So what would you say are your top things for getting started? Uh, for me personally, I mean, the first one, it's guys, we're made mostly up of this thing. We're made up of water, right? Mm -hmm. Drinking water is definitely on my priority list and at least half my weight in water. And we hadn't talked about this before we, we started today, but I think it's also the kind of water that you're drinking, right? I think that needs to be paid attention. Where are you getting your water from? Is it from the plastic bottle in the pack of BJ's water that you bought every week that's been you know, sitting on the shelf, just kind of sitting there in its own plastic? Or, you know, are you looking at different sources of water? And are you hydrating? Because it's not just water, it's definitely hydrating. Uh, and I shared a couple of the other ones with you, Christy, I think the second one, <clears throat> we said that was, you know, kind of the price of entry is, is eating more frequently. Don't wait until you're starving. Your your body has signals. And, and they're there for a reason, right? Your body tries to tell us things. Um, and if you are eating more frequently in the morning, I get up, I try to start my day with protein rich food. And it can be a lot of different things. I think, especially in uh, America, I don't know how many times this happens to you, Chrissy, but the thought of breakfast is, you know, pancakes, waffles, pastries, donuts. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no protein in that guys. Those are dessert, but we said it was breakfast and partnered it with some coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I just want to tag on to that, that. I now have my kids in the habit of we do we choose pro protein shakes for our breakfast, right? So I now give it to the kids in the morning too. In the days that, because you know they're kids, so every now and then yeah. the weekends they have a bagel or a waffle or something, or somebody comes over with donuts. You and, gotta treat yourself, right? There's there's reason there's sprinkled donuts because they make people smile. Right. They make my daughter smile so much. She loves them. But I totally notice a difference in their behavior when they start their day with that kind of food. When it's not protein based, there is more aggression and there is more like angstiness. I feel it. Yeah. I feel it in my own body too. So it absolutely makes a difference going back to the gut being linked to our serotonin, our happy chemical, you know, it just, it really, really plays a part in, in that day, you can feel it and see it. For sure. Or it's, it's always for me, it's like later in the day, 
and not for my kids. It's definitely in that moment. But for me, it's like the next day. It's almost like I got hit with a brick wall. Like what just happened? Um, but there's this balance of I fuel myself with good food, but I also treat myself. And the biggest thing that I talk about so often with my clients is letting go of guilt around food choices. I don't know about you, but I know there's been a time in my past where you, you know, you eat something, you're like, oh my God, I shouldn't have eaten that. Or I'll start tomorrow. And you spend more time thinking about your emotional relationship with food than actually eating. I don't know if that happens to anybody else, but thinking more about food than you actually are utilizing. <clears throat> but back to your five, you know, I think it's definitely drinking water eating more frequently, starting with protein rich foods in the morning. Um, and really, the, I almost should have started with it. But one of the most important to me is getting a daily pre and probiotic. And I think that's super important, because a lot of us have heard of probiotics, but we are not actually educated that they're not as effective without a prebiotic. You need to give good food to that bacteria if we want it to stay alive in the stomach. Um, and then what was the last one that you had on your list, Christy, number five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to tag on to the pro and prebiotic. I did not know for the longest time, right, that you needed those two together. And it's so, so important. So definitely getting those two together, probiotic, prebiotic. Um, but I notice a difference if I forget it, if I forget to take it, it is right. part of my day and will forever be a part of my day. And for anybody who doesn't really know anything about probiotics and prebiotics, what it's doing is, I mean, it's it's balancing the good and bad bacteria in our guts. You know, it's, we are constantly taking in food and then having waste come out. So our systems are always working. So we need that balance of the good and bad bacteria. So I think that's important to talk about. Um, and yeah, and then the last thing is avoiding processed foods. And especially uh, we want to avoid a lot of these seed oils we see, but canola oil, especially. Um, so, I mean, through the holidays, a lot of us were eating a whole lot of interesting things. I know I was. I was enjoying. And you should. Like, at the holidays, you should enjoy. And that's back to that. I love how you said a relationship, an emotional relationship with food, because we do eat for pleasure and socially. And around the holidays, we're enjoying more treats. And side note, I just like to say treat and not cheat because yeah. that's that relationship. Like when you're treating yourself, let yourself enjoy the treat. Don't shame yourself for cheating off of a, maybe a program or a, a so-called, like I say, diet. I'm doing quote um, signs with my fingers right now. <laughs> um, but getting away from that word, even cheat um, and letting yourself treat let it treating yourself on occasions and holidays and things like that. So I know I was definitely eating way more processed foods and, and things. And now I have to say, as we get into the new year and I jumped into um, a healthy living program this week, and even in today's day five, I started on Monday, day five, stepping away from all that processed food, I noticed such a difference in my system, in the way it is working. And I know that has a huge thing to do with it. And I'm just going to tag on to that too, because um, I mean, this can be a whole nother conversation is getting into an elimination diet. And, but I love to share with people to step away from gluten and dairy as well, even if it's a short term to see how your body is going to adjust to it. Because just for instance, having this week seen such a difference in how my body is functioning from yes. um, without the processed foods, without dairy and without gluten. And I'm just going to talk about it because we talk about all the, all kinds of things, all the hard stuff, as Jen said, is like, are you going to the bathroom regularly? And I had not, I hadn't realized that I wasn't going as regularly through the holidays. And it was sometimes going two or three days. And some people, some people might listen to this and be like, well, that's normal for me. Well, it's actually not very normal. You're right. saying you really should be eliminating every single day. And um, I love how cute you say, it. Christy says, we really just eliminating guys everybody poops but are you going every day <laughs> <laughs> see we're talking about the hard shit that hard shit yeah <laughs> everyday hard shit literally literally <laughs> and being pregnant of course as you know jed mentioned i've 
put it out there on social media. Um, my system is working differently right now, obviously. Um, but I had put on a little extra pounds this past month through the doctor. But then I realized a lot of it was literally the poop. <laughs> literally, yeah, it's literally waste. And I think so many of us, mm -hmm. because we're going, oh, what did I do over the holidays? Oh, I totally binged. And then going, oh, well, that must be the immediate weight gain. I think sometimes we just got to take a step back and go, Nope. Is the system working? Am I drinking water? Am I going to the bathroom at minimum once every single day? Like those are bare minimum guys. If our body isn't working the way it's, we're a machine, right? If, if anything else, our bodies are well-oiled machines and they're meant to do certain things to make us feel our best. And I'll tell you that has happened to me in the past, having had two tiny humans. And I'll tell you, it's not just waste, but it makes you feel horrible right once you're literally able to let that shit go you're 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 starting to feel like yourself mm -hmm. and, yeah and this is all related to gut health it might seem like different pieces of health um where we're saying cutting out processed foods and and if you don't know where to start with that it might seem overwhelming it's actually way easier than you think because you're just avoiding a lot of aisles in the grocery store that it makes you shopping a lot easier right um, go on the outside that outside yes. perimeter that's where we live yes yes and fruits and veggies and grains and if you're if you do eat meat looking for grass-fed organic meats and what you're ingesting or the other things that you're ingesting, all those processed foods, like it really does slow down your system. Um, gluten and dairy are actually super inflammatory, whether or not you're allergic. You don't have to be celiac. You don't have to be lactose intolerant to to have your body's reaction to it. It's still inflammatory. And when I coach people through a 30 day nutrition challenge and have them step away from these things, even if it's like, okay, let's start with one, two, maybe three days at a time without these things or without processed foods, even in that time, they're like noticing a difference. And usually we find by the end of the month that it's one or two of gluten or dairy, um, but also, I mean, excess sugars and things, but processed foods just, there's so much crap in them that they're slowing down our systems, um, but also yeah. foods that aren't serving us that are inflaming our systems and getting it to not, not work the way it's supposed to. And as you said, yeah. just keeping things moving along regularly is really important. So if you're listening to this and you're someone who's not regular, <laughs> it's, it's definitely time to look at um, how your system is working, how your car is functioning, right? Because for sure. yeah, I think that's a, it's a great example, right? You take your car in for service when it's not working. Have you, you know, is your check engine light on? Do you need to be checking yourself out and just, just give yourself a break. I mean, if I always tell my clients, if you think about your body like a bathtub, and the drain is clogged, but you can't figure out why, but you also haven't turned the water off. Like give yourself a second, turn the water off, clean the drain, find out what's clogging it up. Uh, and, and you're definitely on your road to, to feeling your best. And if you're a person that has done a lot of the things that Christy and I do in our everyday, I want to really suggest to you as someone that has really struggled with thyroid disease um, throughout actually the last 20 something years of my life, sometimes not everything can be, you know, solved with nutrition. And if you don't know where to go, get to your doc, ask for a blood panel, start at the very base, figure out what's going on inside. If you're the person that's drinking the water, starting with protein food, you're avoiding process, you're doing all the things and you're still feeling frustrated. As a person that has felt that way, I'm here to encourage you, just get to the doctor. I hate it. I despise going to the doctor, right? I can take care of it with food. But sometimes we just have to take that extra step and go, all right, doc, take the blood, find out what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can definitely be more than just what you're dealing with, with trying to adjust things with food, probiotic, prebiotic, and hearing your journey with it is actually really interesting because I think a lot of people can relate to other things happening in your body when you need the little extra help, you know? Well, what I can say on that, and I mean, my thyroid journey can definitely be another episode, but what I will say when I said at the beginning of the episode that my health really has a before 
and a now. Um, I was originally diagnosed in 2003, and I did not have the tools that I do around nutrition that I do now. And I will say the journey is very different this time because I know how to fuel my body so that I can truly identify what things are affecting me. I didn't have that back then. I felt like I was flailing, like falling back into a dark hole, having no idea what was going on, relying on traditional Western medicine, when now I have so much information at my fingertips that it's a totally different experience. And I think that's made a huge difference for me and it could for somebody else out there. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really great thing to share for, uh, for other people to hear that. And Absolutely. yeah. And so coming back around to what we talked about, if you're needing to get started, start on one, or if you're ready to start chipping away at all five of these things, drinking more water, half your weight in, in ounces, uh, your body weight in ounces, eating more frequently through the day. That's really kickstarting your metabolism. It, you'll get hungrier as time goes, even if you're just having little snacks in there, a couple of berries, a couple of nuts, something when you're not really hungry, but just eating more frequently through the day. Uh, as Jen said, starting your day with protein rich foods and avoiding processed foods and canola oils, and then introducing a pro in prebiotics. So those are our five top tips for getting started with this new year and things that can absolutely, and if that's overwhelming, start with one thing, just up your water intake, even if you're not quite half your body weight in ounces, progress is progress, right? It doesn't have to be yeah. an all or nothing thing. We want to talk about habits that are going to make you feel successful in your day and help you start to move the needle to where you want to go. So with that, Jen, did you want to add anything else into there? Yeah, I think uh, the way that I kind of think of it, because you mentioned when we first started, is the reason we chose health as our second topic is it's still January, right? It's only the 6th of January. Um, and I want to encourage you guys, just take a minute. I created goals for my, I don't really even, like I said last time, they're not goals, they're commitments to me. And I have my top three commitments one of which being health. And, and maybe you did the same thing. And you said, you know what, health is a priority to me going into the 2023 year. And I want to take it a step further, because a lot of times we lose momentum with our commitments when we don't know why we're actually doing them. And I know this has happened to me in the past, but I want to encourage you and go, why did I say I wanted to get healthy and really identify it? Is it you know, do you have grandkids and you want to be able to keep up with them? Do you have your own kids and you feel like You need to take a step forward because you want to get to the next best version of your health. Whatever it is, take a second and identify why and write it down. When you can identify why you're doing something, that connection to that commitment is next level. And that's the thing that's going to get you past the 6th of January. And if you haven't said health is in the top three or whatever your commitment is, Figure it out. Identify something that you want to commit to and identify why. That's the thing that's going to get you to 2024. And I know that that's been a, it's been a huge thing for me to identify and be able to go, hey, this is why I said I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Christy, but that's what I wanted to kind of wrap it up and say, hey, what are those, what are those commitments you made? I really hope it's health because health is wealth, guys, right? All of those other commitments aren't going to matter if you don't have your health. Yeah, because when there's the days that I'm not feeling good, those are the days I don't want to do anything else towards mm -hmm. my other goals 100%. So you are absolutely right about that. And just knowing that each of us, all of us, we can all own our health. When we have tools now, there's so much information out there about health and, and how to get started or wherever you're at on your journey, but you can own it and you can take steps today. It doesn't have to wait till tomorrow to get started. You don't have to wait for the, the big, the big thing to cut, to jump into. You can start today on water. Um, so you can own that. You can create the health you want. And if you have any questions, Jen and I are health coaches and we talk about this with people every single day and we absolutely love it. And with our own journeys, we love to share. We especially love to share because of our own journeys, I should say. So 100% yeah. reach out to us if you have more specific questions on things or just want to get started and need need a place to start. We're happy to, to share with you. So thank you guys so much for joining us and create an amazing day, guys. Thanks.